Hi guys, um, hi Emma, hi Claire. I'm the Isel from the Upcoming. It's really lovely to speak to you both today. Um, congratulations on this fantastic series. I mean, I, I've got so far into it and I absolutely loved it. I love things like this. I was so pleased to, um, to be able to speak to you both about it. So um, perhaps you could sort of start by telling us a little bit about what The Killing Kind is all about. What can viewers kind of expect when they watch it? Um, it's very much, it's a psychological thriller, essentially. Um, it's based in the world of law. Um, it's based in the world of the police, which is very much what care kind of represents. You've got kind of all these systems of the justice system and the police system all coming together um, when these two characters, Ingrid and John Webster, meet. Um, and we see how that kind of, all plays out in their relationship. So, okay, perhaps I could start with you. Can you tell us a little bit about your character in this and what it was about the script and the role that kind of appealed to you? Because I know it's an adaptation from the book from crime writer Jane Carey. So did you kind of read that to prep your character and what was the appeal? Yeah, um, I'd, I've, I've worked with the director Zara before and she's a wonderful person to work with. So I was very keen to get back on board with her. But whenever she told me about the sort of book and the character, um, our version is very, very different to the book. It's We sort of take that as our original um, kind of inspiration. And then working closely alongside Jane, we kind of change the ending and change sort of different narrative bits of it um, to sort of work a little bit um, differently for television. Um, and I think I was just drawn to the character of Luke because of how complex his role in the story is. Um, a lot of these psychological thrillers sometimes can be a little bit painting by numbers, i.e., good guys are good guys, bad guys are bad guys, and we all kind of cross the lines and, and hopefully play real people, which means that they kind of come with all their flaws and they do good things and they do bad things. And then that hopefully will create kind of ambiguity because of the relationships that people are creating and past history of certain characters and um my character, for instance, has worked alongside Emma's character before, um, and the audience kind of gets slowly introduced to that. And you don't really know the context of that, but you learn that throughout the series and just about how that then influences the story and where it goes and where it ends up. It kind of all unravels itself for the audience as each episode goes. So it was just, it was just a real challenge to get under the skin of the character and to just try and make it as believable as possible and to take the audience on this kind of mad thriller ride that I think the show kind of brings to the audience, you know? Well, thank you. And obviously for you, Emma, your character Ingrid is, takes, you know, is the lead in the series. Um, uh, and you don't really know if you're kind of the people you're mixing with are always friend or foes. So can you tell us what I've kind of appealed to you about this and how you kind of prepared for this role as well? I prepared by working quite extensively with Zara and we obviously had the character of Ingrid that Jane Casey had created in the book and then Zara and Jonathan had taken it, the other writer, and then I kind of came on board. So it kind of has different iterations. You're building this character block by block as a new person comes in. And it's so wonderful when you get to collaborate with someone who is willing to invite your ideas in as much as theirs um, because then you feel like you get to mold it and make it your own as much as they've made it their own uh, so that was a really big piece of it and Zara would kind of recommend books for me to read which is really helpful um I think was the other question how what appeals yeah yeah I think again it's very similar to what Kerr said you've got a character who is kind of morally ambiguous at times. You don't necessarily always agree with what she's doing. She does a job where she has to, comp she's a defense barrister. So she has to compartmentalize whether she thinks this person might be guilty or not. She actually cannot think about that. So she's constantly compartmentalizing her life, which is a very interesting way to view the world um, because it kind of means she has to compartmentalize herself, which leads to a very kind of, uh, complex personality and complex dynamics with other characters and because the way it's set up that Ingrid is the main character and it's 
all through her eyes. The audience is with her the whole time. It means you have these completely different dynamics with each character that comes in. Um, and to just get to kind of run with that and play with it is um, is just like a dream, dream for an actor, really. And did either of you kind of do things, obviously, for you being a, a detective, Kerr, did you kind of ingratiate yourself in any kind of police work to kind of, or in the station or anything to kind of get some background to that? And obviously for you, Emma, as a barrister as well, did you kind of go into the chambers or law firms or anything? No, I didn't this time. Um, I have just recently finished working with Sarah where I was actually on, on Emma's side of things. I was actually working for the law the last time. And this time, uh, sorry, the, um, I was working as a, a, a solicitor the last time. And this time I'm on the side of the police, uh, which is which was funny because my character in the last thing absolutely hated dealing with the police and how kind of black and white everything was. And this time I actually have to play that kind of straight down the line character. So it was good fun getting to play the opposite side of the coin in this one. I read a bit, I read a book. It's called The Secret Barrister. I really recommend it if you're interested in that world. It's really fascinating because I feel like unless you are a barrister or know barristers or have been in court, you don't really necessarily know much about the world because there hasn't really been a reason for you, for you to unless you have particular interest in it. Um, luckily, I know a few barristers as well, so I was definitely bending their ear quite a lot. Um, but it was more just kind of being on set being in those scenarios, um, getting to wear a gown and a wig, always good fun. Um, mm -hmm. And we got to film at the inns in London as well. So I think as soon as you kind of step into that secret world, you kind of sense the atmosphere and and you kind of think about the lives of the people that live and work there. So um, that's kind of what we ended up doing. And I think for both of you, obviously you work with other characters all the way through it and some of them are quite complex, but for you two, it feels like you're quite in, in equal footing in this. Um, so what was that like working together and building that kind of dynamic on screen? It, it was horrible. It's one of the worst I've ever had. Uh, <laughs> I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> no, um, oh, it was brilliant actually, because Sarah's very, she, Whenever I came on board, I remember I was just because I have to work so clear, so much with the Ingrid character. I remember asking Zara who she'd cast. And then she just said, Oh, she's from the same school of acting as you, whatever that meant. But I just kind of knew that it would be a very collaborative process and, and the, the approach to the work would be very, very similar. So it was just, it was, and I would agree with what Zara said. Every time you came to, um, a scene, nothing was kind of worked out until we kind of got there in the day and worked out what it kind of meant and we tried different things and and also because you're trying, because Zara's trying to build in this ambiguous way of taking the audience on different characters, you know, whether you believe one character whether you don't believe another, she, you kind of give loads of options when you're there on the day shooting it you might do five, six takes all of Every time you say these words, you might use them in a different way or create something new, and you don't know which which way Zara is going to go in the edit. And um, so it was you have to work, I guess, with someone that's that works in a similar way to just try new things every take, um, and to just see what we can kind of create together, which was a lot of fun, and it had a real feeling of kind of collaboration throughout the shoot. We were kind of all creating something together. So, I mean, I, you've probably watched more than I have. I've only seen two episodes. So um, I'm look, very much looking forward to seeing how it all kind of pans out. Mm. And, you know, and I think what was really noticeable and brought to the forefront is, you know, there are limited female barristers around. And, and also that you aren't in as your character is not from a privileged background. So what was that like to bring that to screen and be able to kind of, have that role. I think it's quite a privilege, to be honest. Um, it's all about kind of, you know, making stories and characters from different backgrounds that lead different lives and something that we don't necessarily see on TV all the time. Um, so I think, it, you know, the more varied, the more um, just interesting a character is, that's kind of why I like playing characters. I very much want characters from why do they do the things they do and why are they the way they are? She's work, working class backgrounds. And I, I always had this idea that she doesn't get imposter syndrome because she's worked so hard to be where she is. 
she's not had any kind of leg up in the world at all. So I think when she's in the room and she knows she's good at her job and she always thinks this is exactly where I should be and I'm not going to let anyone make me feel otherwise. And it's very empowering to play um, a character like that. I think it rubs off on you actually a little bit um, in a good way, in a good way. It kind of builds your confidence a bit. So um, yeah, it's great fun. And so what was your relationship like working with, uh, you know, Colin Morgan who plays, you know, Jonathan Webster it's just such an intense relationship to see because you've got that kind of fine line between obsession the electricity kind of between you and the uncertainty um it must be quite challenging uh, as an actor for you to, to work alongside him it was strangely not challenging <laughs> <laughs> I think because we worked so well together it felt easy sometimes you I had this a lot on the show, actually. Sometimes you meet with an actor and you start, you know, playing and you're in your characters and it kind of just fits. Um, and that's very much what happened. And it felt there was an ease to it. And I think that helped in terms of the intensity and what these characters are going through. And you've got all of these balances of one minute they're flirting, the next minute they're being very serious with each other, the next minute they're not sure about each other. So... It, it felt easier then to kind of pick up those nuances because we could also, we had such an easy dialogue and we could communicate so easily. So we'd sit before scenes together and go, what do you think about this? How about we play it this way? Um, so again, it was similar to the relationship with Kurt Kerr, it was like, you just got to go in and play. Um, and there was kind of no false move. You could try something out. If it didn't work, fine, let's try something else, but you might get something from it. Um, and for the way Zara worked as well, um, that was the right way to go about it because sometimes you might get something from a take that doesn't necessarily work for everything else, but it works in the edit. And then you end up with a really kind of an interesting scene, hopefully, when you see it. I mean, like you said, there's a lot of female presence in the driving seat of this, really. I mean, you've got director Zara Hayes, you've got executive producers Paul. Called- Paula Cuddy and Jill Green, you know, what was that kind of like having a female team? What was it like being on set together there? I've been really lucky. I've worked on loads of female projects and they're always, um, yeah, just great fun, really collaborative. Um, I felt very well looked after, especially for such a long shoot, quite a long, intense shoot. Um, so I loved the atmosphere on set. It was kind of like no one... Um, was you know had a massive ego or kind of dominated the set it just felt collaborative and like we were all there to tell the story which is exactly what it should be I think and for you care Emma what were kind of your standout moments on set there must be something that kind of stood out that you think that was such a good day of filming <laughs> but, you know it was it was more uh, every time I came onto set to see poor Emma um you know working as hard as she she did it was just checking in on her and making sure that her, she was sort of uh, still alive, actually, <laughs> on the schedule, which was good. But um, you were very good at checking in on me, I have to say. Uh, honestly, her schedule that she had for this was absolutely insane. So the fact that she's still able to talk now is, is a miracle. And um, you know what? It was just, it was a really lovely job. The, the people that made it, the people that collaborated on it, 11th Hour Films are amazing to work for. I think a lot of times when you do these kind of book adaptations, people some maybe can be too strict to try and sticking so um, so rigidly to the book um, that actually it can kind of lose a little bit of its uh, organic energy of you know what what I would how I my dynamics would be with Emma naturally and and I think you lose a bit of that and that's what Zara does so good as she allows you know, us to take the book as the starting point, but then when we actually get there on the day, it's down to the how the dynamics of the people, their relationships, the new characters, and how they're all working, and you don't deny anything, which I think opens up for a new level of storytelling that takes Jane's original words but kind of builds on them and, and changes them and adapts them in a successful way for the screen. So it's just a lovely experience, and I would do it all again. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, thank you, guys. Thank you so much for speaking to me. I loved it. Um, and congratulations. Thank you very much.